What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. So most of my videos about Tesla are pretty positive, which is fair, the car is really awesome. But today I wanted to talk about one of the biggest negatives of owning an electric vehicle, which is battery degradation. Let's check it out. So the batteries in a Tesla are lithium ion, which are similar to the batteries in your phone. And if you've ever had a phone for more than a few years, you know that the battery gets worse over time. Your phone starts dying sooner, it doesn't last as long, uh, which, you know, if you then apply that to your car can be pretty concerning. So when these batteries get worse, there are two main environmental factors that cause that. One is uh, the state of charge, so what percent the battery's at. Being at a really high state of charge, so 100%, or a really low state of charge, 0%, and being stored in those conditions for any period of time is not good for the battery. It, it degrades the battery in a way. The second is uh, temperature. So when the battery gets really hot, it's not good for the battery. Or if the battery is really cold and then is charged quickly, that can also not be good for the battery, but that's not as common of a scenario. So in the Tesla, there's two ways to combat that. For the state of charge, Tesla will tell you when you plug in your car, don't regularly charge to 100%. Um, so most days you'll charge to 80 or 90% and try not to go below that 20%. Of course, if you need it, if you're driving, then, then you will. But the key is to not get below that 20% and then let the car sit there. You wanna plug it in and let it get back up to a higher state of charge. So using that information, your battery in your Tesla can stay healthy a lot longer. But with those things in mind, batteries will get worse over time. Uh, it's just how quickly are they gonna get worse? In terms of your car, is it mostly related to age, miles, uh, things like that. Of course, if driving more hurts your battery and you drive a lot of miles in a short amount of time, your car won't last as long. Or if you don't drive a lot of miles and you just like your cars to last a long time, you don't want the batteries to fail due to time either. So I'm gonna share with you my battery degradation today. So just a little bit of history about my car first. I picked it up February 27th, 2019. It was a test drive vehicle from Tesla. It had a little over 3,000 miles on it. So I'm imagining those 3,000 miles were probably pretty rough. A lot of fast driving, a lot of hard accelerations, you know, people testing the car out, things like that. Uh, I would assume the battery was well taken care of since it was in Tesla's hands, but there's no way to prove that. Uh, since buying the car, I've put 10,000 miles on the car. So I've done that in a little over three months. My daily charging habit is I usually charge to 80%. And occasionally in the morning, if I have a long day or the battery is cold, like in the winter time, then when I wake up, I'll raise the limit to 90% so that the battery can kind of warm in the morning as I'm getting ready and give me a little extra range. But I don't do that every day. I've only charged to 100% a few times. Uh, once I did it for our trip to North Carolina, once I did it just to, you know, see what kind of range I was getting, and then I did it a third time uh, today for this video. I really don't enjoy charging to 100% because you lose the regen braking. Uh, and the car's not as fun to drive that way. Also, I know it's not as good for the battery, um, but again, like I said, it's it's more storage at those uh, extreme levels of charge. So when I was making this video, I charged to 90%, and then when I woke up in the morning, I raised the limit to 100% to allow it to get to 100 before I left. So the battery was only sitting at 100% for maybe 15 minutes or so, uh, which allowed me to get some pictures and video, uh, and then I drove to work and, and got rid of some of that excess energy. So a couple ways I'll be looking at my degradation. Uh, the first is Teslify. So Teslify is a website that works almost like an OBD2 sensor in a traditional car where uh, it can pull all the data from the car, miles driven, uh, speed, efficiency, things like that. So if you look here, you'll see all of my charging data. So the graph here shows an estimated 100% state of charge. So how Teslify extrapolates this theoretical 100% charge Teslify looks at the percent that you charge to, so let's say 80%, and if the car stops at 248 miles, then it, then Teslify knows that 248 miles at 80% would equal 310 miles at 100%. So you can see here that my state of charge usually stays right around 309 miles for most of the time. Um, I've actually hit and extrapolated 311 miles at one point, so that's more miles than the car is rated for. And then actually after our North Carolina trip, funny enough, you can see that the estimated state of charge has dropped a little bit below what it was. And now it's hitting more in the 305 mile range. So I think this lower range that I'm seeing post vacation has more to do with the temperature. Uh, so again, these uh, battery estimates are just estimates. And what I've noticed is that when the car's charging in the warmer weather, it's stopping a little earlier because it thinks it's at the percent it wants to be. And 
So I'll have 247, 246 miles of range when I charged 80%. But then when I actually go to get in the car and leave, it hasn't charged anymore, but the amount of miles has increased. And I've seen it go all the way from 246 where the car stops it and says, okay, we're at 80%, we're done. And by the time I get in the car, it's all the way up to 250. So there's a gain of four miles there. You know, it's all theoretical without any more energy going into the pack. Um, so that makes me think that the temperature is just kind of messing up the measurement a little bit and the hundred percent charge is still pretty close to new. When I did the hundred percent charge for North Carolina, I was getting 305 miles, uh, but the battery wasn't exactly full. Uh, there was a little gap left. I can show you a screenshot of that, uh, but the car wouldn't charge anymore. Um, but in those situations, I'm not going to sweat a couple miles. It, it doesn't really make a difference. So based off of this, I'm at 305 miles at hundred percent, which would give me less than 2% degradation, which in 13,000 miles isn't too bad. Um, if this trend was to continue, it would look pretty bad. I'd be losing a lot of range in a short amount of time. But luckily, what people have found in the past with the Model S and the Model X is that these cars tend to drop around 5% of their capacity really quickly within the first 10 to 20,000 miles. After that, all the way up to 100,000 miles, they really only seem to lose another few percent over that time. So if the same thing were to happen in the Model 3, then this actually doesn't look too bad. So let's look at my actual 100% charge. All right, so checking out a full charge on my long range all-wheel drive Model 3, you can see at 100%, the car gets 307 miles. Uh, if you look here, lifetime, this is for me. This is when I set the trip, when I first picked up the car. But the odometer, the car actually has 13,074 miles on it. So this is really good degradation. We've only lost three miles in 13,000 miles of driving. So that's really good. I'm really happy with this, you know, level of loss. Uh, less than 1% um, in, in all these miles is really good. But here it seems uh, the Model 3 is holding a charge really well. I mean, after 13,000 miles in a short amount of time, that degradation is really good. Either the new chemistry in these batteries is helping degradation go slower, or perhaps Tesla actually has a little more capacity in the battery than they're telling us. And they're using that as sort of a buffer. So when that a little bit of degradation does happen, the customer is not seeing it. I'm not sure if that's the case. They'd kind of be spending a lot of money there uh, when they could be advertising the cars with more range than they are now. But uh, you never know. Tesla does have a warranty on the batteries. For the Model 3 long range, the warranty is 8 years, 120,000 miles, whichever comes first, with a minimum of 70% retention. So the warranty sounds good at first. It's not great in my opinion and and the reason is 70 percent retention isn't great so if my battery loses 29 percent capacity tesla's saying they're not going to replace it and that would be a lot of range to lose i mean you're losing over 60 miles at that point i have a feeling that if this actually happened to anybody uh they probably would replace it out of goodwill but there's been no cases of this happening so uh we can't say that for sure the other thing is if your battery actually does have a problem that's required under warranty you are probably going to get way more degradation than that or other kind of goofy things happening that would have Tesla easily replacing your battery. So overall, I'm really happy with the degradation of my battery so far. The car charges as much as I need it. I go about my day, I do my driving, and it's not something I even think about. I'm hoping this car is going to last me well over 100,000 miles. I'm really enjoying it. I have no need or want to switch to another car. Um, so let's hope that happens. If you like this video, hit like, get subscribed. Uh, I will do an update for this in let's say at 25,000 miles or so. Um, I'll try to do periodic updates on my degradation because I know it is a big sticking point for people. Uh, a lot of people think that they can't have an electric car because the battery is going to fail on them or whatever. Um, but your battery is going to be good for at least eight years and 100,000 miles or more. And Tesla is backing that. So if you do have anything go wrong, they will replace the battery. All right. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them below and I'll see you in the next one.